What is up my packet people? So today I just wanted to talk to you about a field that I've been using quite a bit more in Wireshark, something that was released in the, about the Wireshark mid threes, three dot, four, five, six, somewhere on there. But it's the conversation completeness field. So if you take a look at a TCP packet, you're gonna see this line that appears underneath the stream index, and that's conversation completeness. So I'm gonna break down this field and show you how we come up with this number that's over there on the right and also how it can be useful when I'm troubleshooting. So let's get into it. Okay, so if you want to follow along with me, you can go and download this PCAP and I've included it in the description down below. So conversation completeness. Uh, really, what does this mean? How is it useful? Well, if we come in, it's always best to show you. If you come into this PCAP, go ahead and go down to packet number 128 and I'm going to right click that and I come to conversation filter TCP. All right, and that'll filter on the same conversation that you see here. You know that you got the right thing, the right conversation, if you have 13 packets. All right, so go ahead and do that. And if you take a look at packet number one, I'm just taking a look at that sin. And if I come over here to my TCP stuff, I come down here to conversation completeness, complete with data, 31. All right, so what on earth does that mean? Well, basically this shows me, Wireshark is telling me, so the TCP conversation that this packet is a part of, has a beginning, so we saw the full handshake. We saw data exchanged, so data either went from client to server or server to client, and then we saw the connection torn down. So we saw all three aspects of a TCP conversation. The in initial establishment, the data exchanged, and then the connection teardown. So that's why this one is considered complete. Now it would show us incomplete if we were missing one of those components. So for example, what if we missed the handshake? and we just saw the data exchange and then the teardown. Or what if we missed the teardown? Well, then we would see the connection established and some data exchanged. Also, you can have connections that have data or some that don't. What if I see a handshake, no data, and then the connection's just torn down? So that would be with no data, and that would tell me that. I might even have a few examples of that here on this PCAP. Over here, this number is one that's kind of interesting to look at. So basically what Wireshark does is it assigns a value to different components of the TCP flow. So take a look at the first packet of a three-way handshake. That's our SYN, right? So a SYN packet has a value of one. A SYNAC has a value of two. So if I just saw a SYN and SYNAC, Wireshark would add those two values together and this would be a conversation completeness. It probably would just be incomplete no data, and I would see the number three over there. That just means SYN and SYN ACK. When I see the third packet of the three-way handshake, the final ACK, that's a value of four. So SYN, SYN ACK, ACK. If I add all that together, that's gonna give me a value of seven. One, two, and four. We're kind of counting up in a binary way. All right, so that would give me a seven, and that would show me that I've completed the handshake, but I don't see anything after that, no data or teardown. And just to show you that I'm not super crazy about where all this is coming from, I went ahead and included this in the description down below. So this is uh, on the wireshark.org docs. If you come down here to conversation completeness, this is where you can see some of those values that I was talking about. So here is sin is a value of one, sin act is a value of two, the final act of a three-way handshake is a value of four. Then if data is sent in either direction, that has a value of eight. A thin has 16 and a reset has 32. So if one of these things or all of them exist in a TCP conversation, Wireshark adds up that total and that's where we get this conversation completeness value from. So in this example, I've got a 31. What that means is I have a handshake. So one plus two plus four. I did see data. So plus eight, that's gonna give me a 15. And then down here at the bottom of this conversation, I have fins, no reset just fins. So once I have 15, I go ahead and add that 16 for the fins, and that's gonna give me a total of the number of 31. So on its own, that number is a little bit arbitrary, but once you start getting used to the different values that you add up and arrive at, now with just a glance, I know, okay, a 31 means I had a good handshake, data was exchanged, and I saw that connection tear down. But let's go ahead and take a look at another example in this PCAP. So I want to kind of tinker with a reset. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and go up to uh, the display filter, tcp.flags.reset equals equals one. Okay, I'm just going to grab one of these, the first one, packet 159. Right click, conversation filter, TCP. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our TCP completeness. Now here, I can see that I've got a handshake since in ACAC. I've got some data that it was exchanged. And then I have a reset, note, no fin. 
Okay, conversation completeness. Complete with data, but this is now a 47. All right, so that shows me I can do a little bit different math here. So I've got my sin, sin, act, act. That's 7. 1 plus 2 plus 4 equals 7. I did see data, so I'm back at 15. But now I'm going to go ahead and add 32 for a reset. That now gives me 47. So for me, I'm starting to get used to looking at that uh, TCP completeness value. And I know basically anything that's north of 32 has a reset. And that's because if you add everything else up, 7 plus 8, 15, uh, plus 16 equals 31, okay, that's going to be all the other flags. But if you ever see anything north of 32, that means you're working the, with a reset there. There was a reset involved in the connection teardown. Now, something I'm going to do real quick is I'm just going to take that value and I just want to add it as a column, okay? So here I can see that if I remove this filter, and I'm going to go ahead and expand this out just a little bit here. If I remove this filter, now I can start to see the different values that I have in this PCAP. And this PCAP is full of different protocols and conversations, so have fun with it. It's going to be a lot of different things that you see. Uh, really, it's interesting when you start to get into some scan activity. That's where we can start to set certain filters and also taking a look at flows that might be long running. So if you come down to, let's take a look at packet 472. It looks like we have some scan activity here. So if I come down here, I'm just going to right click on that one and set a conversation filter, TCP. All right, so here I've got a SYN, SYNAC, reset. All right, so according to my values over here, this would be a 1 plus 2, that equals 3, plus reset, that equals 35. All right, so if I have a ton of 35 activity going on with my conversation completeness, then I know I'm getting this sin synac reset. Okay, so that's scanish, right? So a device is sending a sin, getting a response, but it doesn't want to complete the handshake. It's just literally knocking on the door and then backing out with a reset. So that's very end mappy or scanning and, and some type of enumeration going on. That might trigger me. But if we keep looking, I'm just going to remove that. Just taking another walk down here to see what kind of values I can see. I got 31, a lot of 37s, a 47. Ooh, complete no data. Okay, so just so everybody can join me on this one. I'm on packet 1202. Let me right click, conversation filter, TCP. All right, so here I've got an example where I see a handshake. All right, so sin, synac, ac. And you notice I have my TCP segment length as a column over here. So I can see that these are all empty packets. There's nothing, there's no actual payload in here. So I can see there's no data exchanged. So that's why we see it's complete. So we saw the handshake, we saw the teardown, but we never saw any actual data go in either direction. So that's something that might be interesting. If I have a lot of these, that means I have dead connections that are beginning and stopping, but they're not actually being used by the application. So as far as Wireshark and my personal workflow, this is a new feature that I'm starting to work into that workflow and start to use in my analysis process. As I develop that out, I'm gonna to continue to share that with you. I do think that this is an interesting feature though, that it has a lot of potential and usefulness in the future going forward. So I wanted to make sure you packet people know what it is and how to use it in your analysis process. All right, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you again.